Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up, we're going to talk about Fiasco's big adventure to Vero Beach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the DVC Show, coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Warner, joined in the studio this week by my good friends, realtor and co-owner of MovingToOrlando.com, Mr. Sean Falk. Hey, everyone. Our producer, Mr. Corey Fiascanaro. Welcome home. Also joining us via the interwebs today from World of DVC, Mr. Derek DeBoer. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> and Miss Miss Marissa Valentine. That was a little bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having us. I should, really should stick to the whole Peloton bike thing. Yeah, um, just go with it. And of course, <laughs> and of course, uh, from uh, our senior editor of DVCFan.com, Mr. Paul Krieger. Hey, everybody. And Webmaster Doc from Disboards.com, Rob Lindsay. Good morning. I am having the worst time talking today. I don't know what's going on. It happens. Maybe it's a stroke in installments. Who knows? And just a reminder, our show is brought to you by the world of DVC. That includes dvcresalemarket.com for purchasing a DVC resale contract, hence the name. Uh, dvcrentalstore.com if you'd like to rent out your points or if you'd like to rent points to try DVC before you buy. And monerafinancial.com where you can finance the purchase of your DVC resale contract. So, Fiasco took flight, took the long, long, long drive. About two hours from Walt Disney World property. Over to Vero Beach. Now, I have been to Vero Beach. I've never stayed at Vero Beach. And I was at Vero Beach like 170 years ago. So... Oh, oh, wait, we have a little package. I forgot. Yep. He told me this before the show, and, you know, that was a whole five minutes ago, so I've clearly forgotten it. Um, Fiasco's put together a little video package on Vero Beach for you to check out.
All right. So tell us. Tell us about Vero Beach. Yeah. So uh, like I mentioned, just a two-hour drive uh, from Walt Disney World property. You could probably find a route that was a little bit faster, but I avoided the I-4 completely. So that made it two hours. Um, so for starters, it's a beach. It's a beautiful, beautiful beach that turtles uh, make their voyage of, of life on. Uh, in fact, as you walk around the beach, you're going to see lots of marked off areas um, saying that, you know, we noticed a turtle has laid her eggs here and to stay away from it. Um, also, a thing that kind of caught me off guard was the they asked that you turn all your blinds off and do no, no artificial light things, no things that would cause artificial light uh, after 9 p.m. Because what that can actually do when the turtles hatch is distract them from making their pilgrimage to the ocean and you could uh in indeed kill baby turtles this is actually this is actually a big problem yeah. this is a big big problem on the coast because uh you got a lot of places a lot of hotels and that light confuses these these baby turtles and you know if they can't they have to make they've got to make a sprint from where they're born into the ocean or predators get them yep so when they're going the wrong way Chances are that these poor things are going to make it back into the ocean as slim. Yeah. So now, now there is no truth to the rumor that in these blocked off areas, uh, Fiasco was seen uh, digging up the eggs because he didn't want to pay uh, for eggs to make his breakfast. Well, that's a good segue, actually, because um, in a previous show we did, Worst DVC Dining, uh, Derek did mention that Vero Beach is on there for a reason, and you know it wouldn't be wrong to dig up the turtle eggs to make your own breakfast because the, the food there was not the best. Um, what you have is you have the wind and waves. Uh, they have a table service side and a quick service side. Uh, and then they also have the green room, which is only open for breakfast. We didn't eat there, but we ate both sides of the wind and waves. Um, so table service is open. Table service is open for dinner, yes. Okay. And it was not very good. The way I described it to Paul before we started recording was Applebee's, but at Disney table service prices, um, not, not very good. Uh, we have a video coming out. I'm going to try to stage it so it goes out along with this. So you'll see that review later this week. Uh, on this channel, um, Haley really didn't like it. Uh, I'll give you a little sneak peek, but she she got the short rib, which she orders often at many restaurants. She she phrased that it was the worst short rib she's ever had in her entire life. And her entire life is about twenty eight minutes long, but so <laughs> keep that in mind. Yep. But, <laughs> but uh, with that being said, the quick service I I ate it twice and it was okay. Uh, it would be what you would expect to get with um, with theme park quick service, uh, nothing too crazy. Um, but with that being said, this was an awesome getaway. Uh, the beach is absolutely beautiful and it's, it's just such a nice, peaceful resort. There are lots of activities that you can do. I'll actually bring up on the screen right now, a list of activities that are actively going on. Um, they do have a spa. The spa was unfortunately not open. Uh, but we did take part in one of these uh, community hall activities. We did tile making. And um, oh. I will show you right now. I think on I the did screen. that in rehab once. Yeah, well, it, felt, <laughs> it was very therapeutic. We sat there for about an yeah, hour. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I was going through DTs at the time. So, you know, my, <laughs> you know, my, my tile designs will look like a, like a, like an EKG, but. Um. <laughs> I was meaning to bring the tile with me today, um, but I totally forgot. I did share it on DVC fan, the Facebook group already. Uh, I'm going to pull it up on the screen right now for everybody watching the show to see, but I want to show uh, Pete here in the studio real quick. Um, I don't know how to do this the best way, but he'll come over and take the phone from me. This is the tile that I did that everyone's looking at right now. And now Pete's seeing for the Aww. first time. I it, I did a very bad job at it. It looks it looks like a fifth. Yeah, let's just it. let's just say that 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 I hired Fiasco for the right job. Okay, <laughs> I'm not let's just say I hired him for the right job. I'm not. The I appreciate in the, the effort. I appreciate the thought. I really do. I really do. But it looks like something that a serial killer made in prison. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
<laughs> I smell a giveaway. Just, <laughs> I I did see it on the board, like when it got posted on on the page, like uh on the Facebook group. Um, it popped up, and I was I thought that it was gonna be like I didn't even know who posted it. I just thought there was gonna be some story of like my kid like made this, and like that's that's what I thought it was. But I'm my so, blind eight year old. It was just funny because I'm so bad at like art stuff. Like I cannot do that. Oh, so I was yeah. looking at it, and I was like, oh my god, that's as bad as I see would now. Do. Now like, okay. I was like, I'm not gonna do any better than a I'll, child, I'll, I'll, and it ended up being fiasco. I'll, I'll, I'll give Sean, I'll give Sean that that you, you know I, I've never really seen him do any like art or anything. But, oh, I'm terrible artistically. Wait, but watch this guy make cupcakes. I mean, and, I, mean I can bake. Yeah. Oh, come on. I those mean, cupcakes you made? I mean, they're great. Were, yeah. they, they were not only good, but they were like, you're doing sponge sugar and all this. I mean, you were doing all sorts of designs. They were incredible. They're, they're, they're good. Oh, they're also very artistic. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're good That's for my that. Point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those no. aren't being made in rehab. Yeah. That's my point. Well, I'm not... <laughs> Yeah, I cannot paint tile. I know that. So, um, so I'm sorry now that we've completely decimated your tile art. No, I mean, um. I feel like it deserves as much. I'll also put a picture up of what Haley did. She's the artist in the family. And her now, she is, or she's hers a true artist. Good. I liked hers a lot. Um, so, oh, I don't get to see that? I, I can I see that picture? I don't have a picture of hers. Oh, on see, only, he only takes pictures of his. Yeah. Look at my beautiful <laughs> art. That's so shameful. It really is. Yeah. It really is. It speaks volumes about you. That poor woman. But, um, so, yeah, I think it should be mentioned that I'm not really even a beach person. It's a sensory thing with me. Like, I don't love the getting the feeling of the sand on me and all that stuff. But I went to the beach. I went in the water, and I enjoyed it a lot. Because what's awesome about Vero is as soon as you walk off the sand, they have like a hose off area. And then also on top of that, having a room to go back, I had an ocean view room, uh, 15 points a night, which I'll have you know is is pretty much the low. Uh, the lowest you could get an ocean view room for at Vero is 14 points a night. I got it for 15. So I did, I did get the best bang for my buck with that room. But then also having a room to go back to, not like just a regular beach day where you're getting sand all over your car. Uh, I mentioned it to somebody uh, before we started recording. I actually made a trip out to Cocoa Beach when I wasn't living here back in about 2016. And um, I feel like there's still sand in my car from that from that beach trip. But you can completely avoid that when you have a room, which is great. Question. Um, so we're recording in May. And like major love bug months are like May and September. <laughs> or yes. kind of like even just for coming in general. It's not that bad in Orlando. Like it never really gets that bad here. Well, I've seen it get bad here. It, it but... can, but like I, I remember two years, it was either two years ago or three years ago, they actually closed the beach at Vero in September because it was closed for like two weeks because the love bug problem was so bad. But like, I guess with this being May, like was it bad or? So no, I really didn't notice many love bugs at all. Uh, but they did have like a advisory saying, hey, love bugs are coming up. And when you walk around Walt Disney World or the resorts right now, they have all the hand sanitizer everywhere. They had the hand sanitizer everywhere at Vero Beach as well. And then right next to that was this lotion you could put on you that would make yep. the love bugs not want to be around you. Because so it's a good the point. no see Yep. The it's, yeah, it's, it's the noceums and they That's bite. what you don't want. Yeah. So who else has been to Vero? I, I haven't. I don't think Sean I've has. Been. So uh, Derek <laughs> and Marissa, you've been? We have. <laughs> yes. I love it. Yeah. I will proudly go down as probably one of the biggest Vero Beach supporters of all time. That I almost don't like talking about it too I much know. because I want to <laughs> keep it like a little secret. But it's like Paul said too, what's great about it is there's no high rises. Like Disney picked that resort because they didn't want, you know, big giant condominiums that are 30, 40, 50 stories. Honestly, every building is so small. So you have just such beautiful beaches with with the sea grape trees and you don't, again, see any high rises. They could certainly fix the food, but the accommodations in and of itself, staying in that in room, which is where Paul did, yeah. that is my slam dunk. And we've done for the last five years, we've spent New Year's Eve at Vero, which is sensational to be there on New Year's Eve because they do a big pool party at night with Goofy comes out dressed in a tuxedo and a dance party. And Marissa's actually gotten the Grand Villa, I think, once or twice <laughs> before, too. Which I've, never been, I've never been invited to those trips. Yeah. but. <laughs> 
well, you're the reason that we started going because Derek talked so highly of it. So we went the first time, fell in love. We actually added on points just to go to Vero Beach more. Uh, we love it. It's just, and yes, the food isn't great, but Vero Beach itself has really good restaurants. Yeah. So if you're going to Vero Beach, most likely you're going to have a car to get there. So you can hop in the car, drive 10 minutes, and there's great restaurants. But there's just, there's cornhole right there. The pool is great. The splash pad, the beach, you can canoe, you can surf. There's a tennis courts. Like I said, I love tennis. You can just walk across the street. There's tennis courts there. It's awesome. And then they have so many fun little activities for the kids. They do the campfire and you can make s'mores and sing the camp song. So it's really, really awesome. It, it has all the Disney elements without being like Disney in your face. Right. And yeah, it's for us, that's like my family's favorite vacation is a quick trip to Vero Beach. <clears throat> Rob, have you been to Vero? I have. Oh, well, you've been everywhere. You helped build Vero, Vero, didn't you? It's a wonderful trip. Uh, the, unlike the, the theme park resorts, the resorts like Vero and Hilton Head have excellent recreational staffs. And as Marissa said, they've got all kinds of programs for the children. And uh, they've got family events uh, in the evenings, the, the campfire and s'mores. So it, it's wonderful. One of the best programs that we did there was the turtle crawl, where mm -hmm. they take you out in, late at night with a flashlight and try to see if you can catch a, or find a, a turtle laying her eggs, which our group did. And it's, it's just marvelous and really uh, interesting to see that with someone who knows what they're looking for. And, and no truth to the rumor that uh, Rob went up behind the turtle with a shovel and uh, dug up the eggs. Um, and then no had those for breakfast the next morning. I will no send pictures for this episode or videos. We got to see little babies climb out of the hole oh, and run to the beach. And oh my gosh, like my son, he was three at the time. And it was just like the most magical experience. So I'll send you videos. When you guys, Please. when you said turtle crawl, I thought you were saying that they like took you out there and did the experience, like bar <laughs> buried you and then you had to like try to crawl your way. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Like I mean, my face when that, when he said that, I was like, what in the world? And then he started in and he was like, oh, like, and they take you out there at night or whatever. And I'm like, is that where it starts? Like uh, to do this? That was shocking. Um, okay. I get where, I get where you were going with it now. Um, I, I have a question for y'all that have been. Um, I guess a couple questions, but one, how long do you recommend booking there? Like what's a, what do you think is a decent amount of time to stay at the resort? Me personally, I don't like to go for anything less than two nights. Right. Okay. Just because it takes a couple hours to get there, right? So even if it's, say you're in Florida, if it's two hours to get out there, by the time you check in and your room's ready, you want to have at least a couple of full beach days. And especially, Sean, it, uh -huh. if you want to find some great restaurants at night too, you've got to, you know, allow at least an extra night or two just to be able to go out because there's some fantastic mm -hmm. restaurants in and around Vero too. Mm -hmm. So I would not personally go for anything less than two nights. So and I three, like four, three or four, 15. Would be 20. 15. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Derek and Marissa, you'll have to send me a list of those off-property restaurants because I didn't go to any of the, the off-property restaurants. But me personally, I drove up Thursday around 1130 and I stayed one night and left Friday night. And that did not feel like enough time. Definitely right. when I go back, I'm definitely going to want to make it like a long weekend. Do at least do it. I feel like three nights I would need to go back when well, next time I go back. Okay. Well, for me and being away, it's like there's nothing better than that feeling <clears throat> on the first morning you wake up and you realize you're not driving home. And you're like, we have absolutely nothing to do today except go to the beach look for baby turtles and see if Marissa will let us into the grand villa. So yeah, it's just a perfect day. <laughs> the beach now cottage. let's the beach cottage. So Paul, have you been, have you been to Vero? I have not been to Vero, but uh, listening to all of you guys talk, it definitely sounds like I need to make a trip in, in the near future. Um, I don't want this to sound the wrong way, but like living where I live, it's hard for me to justify spending my points to go to Vero versus going to Disney world or land or, 
in a you month. Need more points, to take up the... <laughs> we don't yeah, want to take up uh, the reservations yeah. anyways. So, <laughs> I, I, hopefully, within, hopefully within the year, I won't have that problem. Uh, hopefully, I'll be living in Orlando and Vero becomes a, a lot more appealing at that point. Um, but that's that's why I haven't traveled there yet. So um, I, that I mean, Paul mentioning that actually leads me to what my next question was going to be. I felt the same because I don't I, I do need more points, but I also um, saved mine up to go to Olani. Um, but even though I live locally, I do go do staycations at the beach and I'll and I always rent an Airbnb and I always rent a house. Um, so I guess like do you do you see it as being valuable enough to not do that and not pay cash to rent a home by comparison to staying at the resort because i've always i like having my own private pool and that kind of stuff for those stays but do you think it's not as chaotic enough it feels like it'd be chaotic going to so Vero. if you look at like even like Corey was saying uh, you can get an ocean view, right, for 15 points. So mm -hmm. if you net out to say the values of your points over the years, it's about $10 a point. So 15 times 10, ultimately your expense using your points is about $150. So for beachfront, <laughs> if you compare that to like a beachfront rental, you're probably going to be paying for a beachfront rental like oh, yeah. $800 to $900 a night for mm -hmm. an actual house with a pool and beachfront rental. Mm -hmm. So when you take that into comparison, and you can open up your balcony and have ocean view right there. I would say that's going to be your comparison. Now, can you, I know, I know with the cottages, they are like right on the water and you can kind of just walk out and go to the beach, come back however you want to go. If you're in like the rooms, like in the resort, can you, I'm talking to like this, the back of a TV for some reason, <laughs> as if I'm looking at Marissa for this. So I'm like, I guess I can look at my camera. Um, but, uh, okay. So if you are, um, if you're saying inside or one of the in rooms or ocean view or whatever, is it a, I've always pictured it as a thing where if you're at the beach, you have to go back in, go back through the lobby, take your elevator back to your room, and then go back to go do whatever it is you need to do and go all the way back. Is that fair? Like, is that usually the case? Or so do you yes, need like the cottage to not small. have to do that? Like the resort, the, so the cottage, you still have to walk kind of around mm -hmm. to get to the beach. You don't go straight out to the beach. Mm -hmm. And the resort, you go from the beach, you do have to go through the lobby. But like Derek was saying, the resort itself is so small that like you're not going through like a huge lobby. Yeah. It's not a long walkway. There's a couple levels. I mean, I'd probably say it's like a five minute walk. Okay, yeah. that's I would yeah. I would say yeah. that's even high. So like I was on right. the I, would say. I was on the fourth floor, which is the highest floor, and I feel like most ocean views are probably on the third and four, well, probably all the ocean views are third and fourth floor because there's like a hedge that would block the right. lower floors from seeing the ocean. Mm. So I was at, I was the farthest away from the entrance to the beach that you could really be. And like, depending on the elevator ride, if the elevator was there ready for me, I feel like I could be back to the, the entrance to the beach in like two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now, I, I think I, that's what I'm thinking is, I, I think I've been picturing it like Yacht and Beach Club or like Animal Kingdom Lodge where you like take the elevator <laughs> and it could be like, a mile like like no and it's just this long, <laughs> no. long walk because no. i can't even visualize no, it's a pretty what small resort, resort. Looks like. but let's talk about the other side of vero beach uh now uh very uh you know you can get pretty inexpensive uh points here uh you know right i mean we're talking 70 dollars 70 dollars a point you know depending on the size of the contract just being general but the dues, mm -hmm. highest dues of any DVC resort, eleven dollars and twenty three cents as of right now per point that you have to pay. Now that's because it is on the ocean in Florida, and we have a thing called hurricane season, uh, <laughs> and the storms can get really bad, and the dues have to pay for maintenance. Yeah, plus insurance. Let's talk. You know, they've got to they've got to insure that property, and it's not cheap. Uh, Hilton Head is a little bit better at nine dollars and ninety-seven cents a point, but you know, for example, in one of our recent shows, we were talking about uh, Saratoga Springs, seven dollars and eleven cents a point, mm -hmm. uh, Polynesian, seven dollars and five cents a point, Grand Floridian, six eighty-one. Um, so it is, it's expensive. 
So a lot of people say, oh, well, buy these cheap points. You know, it's $70 a point. That's great, you know, when I'm comparing it to these other resorts. But then you have to factor in what it's going to cost you every year. Yeah. With those dues. Now, I know I don't have to ask you this question, Fiasco, but knowing the price of those dues, <clears throat> would you buy it, Bureau? Never. My Copper Creek points worked just fine. No, oh, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Now, does anybody own it, Bureau? No. 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 Everybody uses everybody uses other points to stay at Vero. Everybody uses other. I mean, that's what I would do. I would like to go out there, but I'm not a beach guy. I'm just not. Mm. And it's like there's nothing to do. And I'm not a nothing to do vacation guy. See, I gotta gotta do stuff. I am not a beach guy <laughs> either. But I think you should make a day trip out of it one of these days because I'm not a beach guy. And as soon as I was like, okay, get over the hurdle. I know you don't like getting wet with sand on you. You don't like that feeling. Just do it. And I just did it. And like literally, I'm, I'm not kidding you. There's 20 feet between you getting off the beach and then being able to hose off. It's totally fine. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal at all. No, I don't like being on the beach at all. Oh, okay. I don't like being on the, the beach at all. Light. I grew up on the Jersey Shore, and as a kid, I was on the beach all the time. And then I hit like I don't know, nineteen. I'm like, okay, done, done. Um, I I'm, do it just to make a tile better than Corey. There you go. There you go. Do the tile painting. <laughs> the the dues part because I because people do mention dues a lot, and I guess I need to I would need to dig into it more because for me, I don't see how the the um, the difference in buying there, I mean, just because you save so much money on the contract, like, should that not make up the difference? If we're talking seventy dollars a point, and well, I guess it expires in twenty forty two. So comparing it with like Boardwalk, that's like one hundred and thirty five dollars a point. I mean, it would take you like twenty years to make up the difference yeah. in in point dues you know what i mean for it to mm -hmm. even break even at that point so it is i think that's my question is like it does anyone know like do the points is it that big a difference because i mean we're comparing like if you compare saratoga with that eleven dollars and something a point versus seven dollars and something it's an extra you know maybe 400 to 800 bucks a year kind of thing depending on how many points you have so well, I, don't I mean, know. I can tell you that the people that we talk to, if they're going to add on points at Vero, it's mainly for the reason that they want to go during busier times okay. of the year. And honestly, Vero's not easy to get into in yeah. that, you know, June, July, August time frame, let alone if you want one of those beach cottages, too. So yep. the people that want to get those rooms and want to go during busier times of year. They don't care about dues. Well, and you can't book it cash, right? So if you've ever gone online and tried to just pay for a room at Vero Beach, it's near impossible. You pretty much have to be a DVC member, especially for beach cottages. Um, but Sean, to answer your question, in terms of like value, if we look at like Saratoga Springs and Polynesian being the best bang for your buck when you take mm -hmm. the purchase price, the years remaining, and the dues, Vero Beach falls at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. Now it is right at the bottom with Beach Club and Boardwalk. So in your example, they're pretty close. Okay. So if it comes to, hey, over the years, those ones are gonna be, you're gonna save like a dollar per point at Boardwalk. So if you own 200 points, you're saving $200 a year for the next 20 years. Gotcha. And like uh, both Derek and Marissa pointed out, I mean, I think there is, owning a Vero Beach contract is for somebody. Uh, Cause like mm -hmm. they mentioned, there's only six beach houses, six of them. So if your thing is going to be a 4th of July trip to Vero Beach with the whole family, oh, yeah. then you probably need to own a Vero. And let me let me throw this question to Rob. Um, yes. Hilton Head or Vero Beach? Which one? <laughs> well, uh, I got I would pick Hilton Head. Uh, the beach is much better. Uh, Vero's got a rather sharp drop off and or at least it did when we were there. And uh, Hilton Head at low tide, you can walk out 30 yards and still be up to your waist. So, so you, but uh, so the actual beach. Let's talk about facilities, though. Um, the resort, Hilton Head versus Vero Beach. The Hilton Head Resort has no uh, attached restaurant. 
Mm. But there are about six restaurants within, I mean, across the harbor from the, the resort, five minute walk away. So that, that's kind of a wash. And those are pretty good restaurants. Some of them are. And within five minutes, uh, there are a lot of very quality restaurants for, for dining. Uh, shopping, same thing. It's it's right across the harbor from the uh, from the resort, and uh, then it's a mile down to the to the beach itself. So, and we have turtles too. And and you also <laughs> dig up their eggs and make them for breakfast. <laughs> right. Um, now, Fiasco, you, did you talk about the room? Yeah. Did you have? Yeah, uh, Ocean View Studio. I said I got it at the best bang for the buck you really could possibly get. Oh, right, 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 yep. right, right. Okay. Um, I it do... was, feels like it was nine, nine years ago. <laughs> so. I, I would say, too, to, to people, because I didn't even realize, because I've just lived in the southeast most of my life, um, and at the beach a, a good chunk of my life, I it didn't register with me until uh, last year. We rented, uh, me and some of my friends, or I guess two years ago, um, we rented a beach house here in Ormond Beach, which is a terrible beach, by the way, um, if you ever think about going there. But um, there's like absolutely no shoreline. But um, so we rented a, a house and it was like very late September going into early October. And they're all from the Northeast and they were like, oh no, like we don't want to go, like we want to go in the summer because it's going to be warm. And I was like, it will still be warm, like at the end of September. Like they came and I think it was in the high 80s, low 90s the entire week that, that we were there. So um, it was not, I think for some people they think, oh, if I, I need to get use those months and like friends I have in, from Wisconsin and all that, they're like, oh yeah, we get like a month or two in the heat of summer where it's really, really hot out. But here, I mean, it stays pretty hot out most of the, a good chunk of the year. So you really aren't limited, I guess, in saying, you know, I, I would never say, oh, I wouldn't go to the beach in the fall or in the early spring or something here because it's still nice yeah. weather out. So something to think about if you're yeah. booking. All right. Well, yeah. thank you, Fiasco. I'm glad you had a good time out in Bureau Beach. So thank you, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next week with another edition of the DVC Show. Have a great week.